text today in Isaiah chapter 48, we see five beautiful principles of the leadership of God in our lives. I hear so many people talk about leadership today, and so many people have so much to say about leadership today. But I want you to look at God's leadership. First of all, I want you to know that God as a leader restrains himself. In Isaiah 48, verse 8 and 9, Yes, I will tell you of things that are entirely new, things you've never heard before. For you know so well what traitors you are. You have been rebels from birth. Yet for my own sake and for the honor of my name, I will hold back my anger. I will restrain my anger and not wipe you out. Now, why does God say, I'm going to restrain my anger? He said, I'm going to restrain my anger for my own sake and for the honor of my name. Now, there's a good principle of leadership to remember, because sometimes, you know, people are so rebellious and they're such liars, you just like to lose your patience. But God says, no, for my own honor and for the sake of my name, for the sake of my reputation, I will restrain my anger. Okay, so a little anger management class there, folks. Restrain your anger for your sake and for the sake of your reputation. Secondly, verse 11. I will rescue you for my sake. Yes, for my own sake. I will not let my reputation be tarnished, and I will not share my glory with idols. Why do you rescue people in their failure and sin? For the sake of your own reputation. So that sounds very selfish, but that's God's leadership. God forgives and rescues his people for the sake of his own reputation. A person looked at me one time and said, Pastor Samuel, you're way too forgiving. And you know, I was beginning to feel pretty bad about that lately. Oh, Pastor Samuel, you're too kind. You're too forgiving. Da, 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 da. You, you need to be harsher on these people. You need to. Da. And you know, I got to thinking when I read this passage. God forgives us and rescues us for his own sake for the sake of his reputation. That's another thought to think about in leadership. Thirdly, verse 17, this is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord your God, who teaches you what is good for you and leads you along the path that you should go. So, all right, God as a leader teaches us what's good for us. That's good leadership. He doesn't teach us what's best for him. He teaches us a lifestyle that's good for us. There is no selfishness in the heart of God. As a leader, there is no personal agenda in God's heart. He teaches us what's good for us. And then it continues. And he leads us along the paths we should go. Not what's best for him. What's best for us. Beautiful principles of leadership. When you teach the people, you should not be teaching people things that that helps you. You should be teaching people things that helps them. And you should be leading them in a path that helps them. Then he continues in verse 4 and 5. But I replied, my work seems so useless. I've spent my strength for nothing and to no good purpose. Yet I leave it all in the Lord's hand. I will trust God for my reward. And now the Lord speaks. The one who formed me in my mother's womb to be his servant, who commissioned me to bring Israel back to him. The Lord has honored me. My God has given me strength. That's another great principle of leadership. When you and I come before God and we say, God, I feel like that everything I've done is useless. I feel like everything I've done is just like, like I've spent all my strength for what? For nothing. And God reminds us, leave it all in my hands. Remember, we have a beautiful promise over the new covenant. Your labor in the Lord is never in vain. So sometimes when you feel like, I've sacrificed, I've given all my strength for nothing, leave it in God's hand. Your labor in the Lord is never in vain.